there is only one goal, an SEC championship ring. Here at Tennessee, the concern was the offense, but not anymore. Travis Stevens has proven he can carry the load. Casey Clawson has proven he can lead. And welcome the freshman sensation Kelly Washington. With the pieces in place, the Vols are also thinking national title. A new era in Georgia football is under the watchful eye of Mark Rick. The architect of Florida State's high-powered offense is ready to put Georgia over the top and contend for the SEC title. Now, depending on a rather green quarterback, the Bulldogs hope to repeat the scene from just a year ago. Georgia, Tennessee, next. The Smoky Mountains are ringing with the sounds of Rocky Top. Oh, Rocky Top, go with me. Oh, we love Sixth ranked Tennessee has made the traditional ball walk with its unheralded leader, Casey Clawson, getting a last minute bit of advice from mom. Tennessee has Georgia on its mind. The unranked Bulldogs have made the trek to Knoxville, looking to upset the mighty ball. Today, it's the Home Depot SEC football, Georgia versus Tennessee. Another sellout crowd at Neyland Stadium, home to the Tennessee Volunteers. game of our SEC doubleheader here on CBS. We'd like to welcome a new member to the CBS College football family. He ran the run and shoot at the University of Houston. Oh, dangerous with the arm, dangerous with the legs. The 1989 Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Andre, welcome to CBS. Uh, thanks, Craig. It's good to be here with you. Will I see the Heisman pose before the day's out? <laughs> At some point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about Tennessee. It's all about defense here in Knoxville, number one ranked in the SEC. But so much talk in this town around the country centers around their freshman wide receiver sensation Kelly Washington. 22-year-old freshman who's been in the Florida Marlins baseball system the last four years. Just a fantastic athlete with a work ethic that's become infectious to this Tennessee team. He showed his athleticism last week with 11 catch, 256 yard performance. He's a natural, a phenomenal athlete who we'll have to keep our eyes on today. I have a feeling we'll be calling number 15 quite a bit. Now for Georgia, Mark Richt is in, Jim Donnan is out. Donnan left Richt with a nice group of players. It's all about attitude, trying to change things around down in Athens, and he starts with his redshirt freshman quarterback, David Green. Yeah, caught on to Mark Richt's offensive system faster than any player in the entire program. It's allowed him to throw for 252 yards a game, four touchdowns with only two interceptions. He's gotten better and better each and every week. But he'll have to watch out for that Tennessee blitz package, one that even I wouldn't want to face. Well, this is the 30th meeting between these two teams. Tennessee leads the series 17-11-1. Bulldogs won last year in Athens by a final of 21-10. And there's the Georgia rookie head coach, Mark Richt, spent 15 years at Florida State, the last seven as the Seminoles' offensive coordinator. Other side of the field, this part of the country, you know him well. Head coach Phillip Fulmer, 10th year as the Vols' top man. And folks, he is Tennessee through and through. Played in the stadium, by the way, during the early 70s. Game conditions, we had some rain early this morning. Cloudy skies, temperature around 50 degrees, and the wind 12 miles an hour. And Andre, fallen volunteers. There's been some injuries with this club. Reggie Coleman out ankle, Overstreet. So talented, out knee. Respert out with an ankle, and wide receiver Dante Stallworth will not play due to a wrist injury. Now, Tennessee won the toss. They chose to defer until the second half. Kicking off for Tennessee, coming off a big win at home a week ago against LSU. They stand 3-0, unbeaten in the SEC at 2-0, while Georgia 
comes off a win against Arkansas. The Bulldogs 2-1 and one, and even up in the SEC at 1-1. One and one. Justin Colquitt will kick for the Volunteers. And back to receive Fred Gibson and Kenny Bailey. And at the five-yard line, underway. It's Bailey up the middle. And Bailey to the 26-yard line. There's David Green, redshirt freshman, a left-hander, threw for 298 yards in the Bulldogs' win over the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks just a week ago. A lot of high hopes for Georgia and David Green. And Andre, watch out. They like to open up in that no-huddle offense. And they huddled the first play of the game, and that may be about all you see today is one huddle, and then they'll go no-huddle the rest of the game. Three wide receivers set. Green, the lefty, feels some pressure, throws to the flat, incomplete, and let's set the Bulldog offense. Up front, it's Stinchcomb, Jackson McGill, Breed Love, and Marshall. And in the backfield, Musa Smith, Haynes, your running back, Edwards and Gary, your wide receivers, Randy McMichael, will start at tight end. So the incompletion brings up second down at 10. Green again from the shotgun. Sets up good protection, throws, and a tough hit. The ball in the hands of Terrence Edwards, but incomplete. Andre Lott delivered the pop. Defensively for Tennessee, a tough front of Jackson Henderson, the Outland Trophy winner, Hainsworth, along there with Ritzman. Whiteside, Stevenson, and Moore are your linebackers. The corners, Lott and Greer, Baker and Battle, your safeties. And the defensive coordinator in the booth up top is John Chavis. We talked about blitzing most of the afternoon early and often. Third down at 10, again pressure, but Green able to pitch the ball out to Michael Johnson, the sophomore. Julian Battle from his strong safety spot made the hit, but short of the first down. So it's a three-up, three-down series in the opening drive for Georgia. Two completions for David Green, but really not anything that, that would affect the Tennessee defense. They may stay in base and try to apply some pressure with the front four. He's going to have to move the ball around, spread it around, do better, a better job on first down. Jonathan Kilgo. You see his average just under 44 yards a kick. His boot in 159 on the season. Rashad Baker back to receive the kick. High, high hanger at the 25. Baker, room on the far side. Baker popped and thrown out of bounds at the 40. So what you like to see your return man do, just take the ball and get what he can get with the blocks that are set in front of him. You don't pitter-pat, you don't move your feet around, you get the ball, you go north and south in a return game. 45-yard kick and a 15-yard return. Here comes Casey Clawson, only a sophomore, but Andre, very impressive, 9-1 and one as a starter, and he's drawn some comparisons to former Tennessee quarterback Peyton Manning. He had a slow start last week against LSU, couple of picks early, but came back with a very impressive game over 300 yards. Absolutely. First series for Tennessee from the 40. We'll start on the ground. Travis Stevens tripped up on the far side by Wansley. Travis Stevens, 5'9", 190. And here is Tennessee offensively. Sean Young and Weary, Wells, Herrera, and Ofenhusel will be up front. Stevens and Bartholomew, the running backs, the wideouts, Graham and Kelly Washington. Keep your eye on 15. And John Finlayson is the tight end. Washington and Graham, two wideouts to the near side from the eye. Second down, call it five. Again, the little guy pops through. So strong. Travis Stevens, the fifth year senior with the first down. Tennessee. Defensively now for the Bulldogs of Georgia. They'll go with Adrian Jacob, Sullivan, and Charles Grant up front. Linebackers are quick with Clemens, Gilbert, and Boss Bailey recovering from that ACL injury a year ago. And defensively, Thornton and Wansley, the corners, Vieira and Phillips, your safeties. And Brian Van Gorder, defensive coordinator, first year with the Bulldogs. First down, Tennessee at midfield. The workhorse. They've been giving the football to this little guy all season long. 
He had 41 carries against Arkansas, had 34 last week against LSU, and there's so much talk, Andre, the size. Oh, he can't handle the, uh, the, the constant beating, but well, we talked to Travis Stevens, and you can just look at his body. He could take the hits. Absolutely. He walked in the meeting room. He looked like he still had his shoulder pads on from <laughs> practice. But you talk about you talk about size. Look at that def that offensive line. It's, it averages about 300 pounds. It's good to, for a guy like that, 5'9", to just kind of hide behind his offensive line and work his way down the field. Already, Stevens with three carries, 18 yards on this opening try. Bobby Graham in motion. Again from the eye. And again, they run it right up the middle. Nice cut. Stevens breaks it, stumbles and falls at the 20-yard line. He was gone. Jermaine Phillips caught him. What a terrific run by the speedy Travis Stevens. You got to watch Travis Stevens come through the hole here. It's just a cutback, and he breaks back outside. Just an unreal run for Travis, Travis Stevens. Another look here, he just breaks outside, shows that power, that strength that we just talked about, Craig. Up the field, he would have been gone had he not lost his balance. He's 23 years of age, he's waited his turn. There's been guys like, well, Jamal Lewis, Travis Henry. Stevens, a fifth year senior. A 23 yard pickup, first and 10 at the 20 of Georgia. And the quick throw, near side, watch out. Kelly Washington turns it upfield, out of bounds inside the 10 to the seven. Bruce Thornton, Bruce Thornton is a player that we talked about in meetings yesterday. They're going to try to pick on. They're going to try to pick him, pick on him at the corner. He's going to have a bullseye on his chest most of the of the day. The last two games, he really hadn't had a had a good game since the first game of the season. 17th, 17th catch for Kelly Washington, and each one of them being for a first down this season. 21 21 yards already this year. You look at the red zone this season, Tennessee going to try to punch another touchdown in. It's first and goal at the seven-yard line. This has been a Travis Stevens series. Double tight set. Stevens inside trying to go out, and a nice shoestring tackle by Jonathan Sullivan, the sophomore defensive tackle. They finally stopped Travis Stevens behind the line of scrimmage. Just just actually getting back to the line scrimmage. But what's been amazing to me is T Tennessee being able to run the football. Georgia's bringing eight guys, nine guys sometimes in the box, and they're still able to block it and free Travis Stevens up for big games. Seventh play of this drive approaching. Two wide outs to the far side. Again, I formation. Stevens goes in motion. They hand it off to the big fullback. Not much. Bartholomew, you might see Andre a little bit of a slip there on the handoff. Looks like he, uh, the footing not that good. A little bit of rain early this morning. Tell you what, it was David Jacobs that just fights off the block here and gets himself in, kind of falls into a frame. He beats Anthony Herrera to the inside, just kind of sticks his arm out there and was able to bring Wayne Will Bartholomew down. That brings up third and goal, clock running under 11 minutes, opening quarter here in Knoxville. Troy Fleming, number 27, is in, along with Jason Witten in motion, number one. Little timing pattern to the corner, over the shoulder, touchdown, Washington! Here's a look, Casey Clausen just a three-step drop and just lobs it into the corner of the end zone. Actually, Kelly Washington beats double coverage. With it. Look at him get his feet down. Just a, a fantastic job by a receiver who hadn't really been playing receiver all that long, just since spring ball. Amazing. Amazing. Alex Walls with the extra point. And a kick, a kick shot up and through the uprights. Oh, impressive start for Tennessee. 7-0 in Knoxville. Well, Tennessee marches 60 yards for the touchdown to lead 7-0. Kelly Washington with his second touchdown catch of the season. Only took 318, Andre, but give some credit to Travis Stevens. Five carries, 41 yards, and then after you're starting to play the run, you've got to worry about Kelly Washington and Casey Clawson County with a nice little touch pass to the, to the corner of the end zone. The new weapon, he just gets his feet down and hadn't played receiver all that long, like we mentioned, in the spring, and then comes in and 
First first drive against the conference opponent, a big conference opponent, catches it for a touchdown. Cole quit with the kick, a short kick taken at the 12-yard line. It's Fred Gibson up the middle, has some room, and Gibson puts Georgia in fine position at the 43-yard line. Polkwood had to make the tackle, and now, Andre, here's a look at the Exxon and Mobile playbook. One of Georgia's favorite plays. You see the fullback's just going to kick out on the area outside defender here. He seals inside, allowing Musa Smith to turn up. He has one of three ways to go, either straight away, break it outside, or turn it up inside. Georgia loves this football play. Edwards and Gray, the two wide receivers. Tennessee showing blitz. They go up the middle on a nice run by Musa Smith. They're no. bread and butter, Craig. He, he is, uh, has got to settle David Green down. He's got two completions early. But they want to be able to run the football, control some clock here, and they go right back to the no huddle. Yeah, no huddle coming up on the 10-minute mark. Good look at David Green, 6'3", 222-pound redshirt freshman. And again, on the ground, trying to work outside. Breaks a tackle, first down Bulldogs. Musa Smith, ranked number two, Andre in the SEC in rushing. Just about 110 yards a game. And guess who he follows? His counterpart today, Travis Stevenson. Yeah, he's just just a fantastic back. Been compared, you're talking to Neil Calloway in meetings this week. Neil Calloway compares it to Antoine Smith, a guy that he coached down at my alma mater, the University of Houston. First and 10, Georgia at the 44 of Tennessee. On the play fake, the left-hander throws complete. And Ben Watson, Flies out at the tight end spot, makes the catch, his eighth reception of the season, and he was tackled down by Eddie Moore. Good play fake there by David Green, using his eyes, watching the running back into the line of scrimmage, and basically hitting his tight end on an underneath route coming back across the field. Good job with his eyes, good play fake by David Green. Nine-yard pickup. So it's second down and one. Green had a... Watson it is had to make his way back onto the football field and it slows down the tempo of Georgia as you saw there handoff goes out to Jasper Sanks who backs up Smith white side made the tackle well, interesting story on Jasper Sanks he, he was in the recruiting battle with, with Jamal Lewis when Jamal Lewis committed to Tennessee he decided to go to Georgia he could be here playing on a Tennessee football team but he chose to go to Georgia his last ball game against the school with which he could have played for well, those recruiting wars are, are strange, Unreal. aren't they? David Green stands, throws, hot slant, caught. Great throw, beauty of a catch. LeBron Mitchell, senior from Marietta, Georgia. Good job by David Green standing in and throwing the slant route. LeBron Mitchell uses his body to position the cornerback outside, allowing David Green a huge throwing lane. 14-yard pickup, only the fourth reception of the season for Mitchell. Well, this crowd on their feet, Tennessee up by seven. Handoff sinks, and he's wrapped up from behind at the 15 by Constantine Ritzman. Talking to Mark Rick this week, he mentioned the fact that he was concerned about Georgia's red zone scoring. They're down here inside the red zone. He likes, to, he wants to put more touchdowns on the board as opposed to just kicking field goals. So we'll see how the play calling goes down here. Second down and seven. Seventh play of this drive. Again, shotgun. The left-hander. Good protection to the end zone. Incomplete. Had a man got tied up at the goal line as LeBron Mitchell broke across the, the checkerboard end zone. Yeah, just a little bit out in front of him. Had some pressure there for, by the front. Rashad Moore, the defensive tackle, right defensive right tackle, was pressuring David Green and forced him to make a throw a little bit too soon. Inside the red zone, you see 14 opportunities for the Bulldogs, seven touchdowns, two field goals, and they turn it over twice. Third down. They need seven for the first down. Green throws to the flat. Sanks has it, 20. Sanks 15, stops, and then flies around and picks up a couple of yards to the 13-yard line. Check that, Damian Gary, number 18. Sanks wears the 28 on his back. Gary only a sophomore out of Athens. This still has to do something for the Georgia confidence. You go down and you, you, you take one in, in on the cheek by the Tennessee offense, and you come right back and you respond. You almost have to put points on the board. And they come right down the field, drive it down, and, and 
if the field goal's good, it's definitely a positive for the Georgia sideline. Well, Billy Bennett will try the field goal from 29 yards. He's 6 of 10 in that department this season. And from 29, Bennett connects. Should, so, be, a, should be a chip shot for him. He hit a 54-yarder last week. Impressive drive. They Absolutely. get three. 7-3 in Knoxville, Tennessee, and Georgia. Now there's a look at August 6. Now he's the real one, by the way, Andre. Just pointing that out to you. <laughs> English Bulldog, you know that little guy weighs 55 pounds? He's a cutie, isn't he? <laughs> Second down and five. Georgia only had 10 on the field, forced to take that timeout. And it's lucky they got another man in. Didn't help much, though, because Travis Stevens continues just to run right through the front of Georgia's defensive front. You can see the hole just open up. Anthony Herrera here with his block. Will Bartholomew and Travis Henry, Travis Stevens just cuts it back into a big gaping hole on the backside. Scott Wells does a good job at the center position, pinning his guy on the backside, allowing Travis Stevens to, to cut it back. A little quick throw to the sideline. It's been a long time since I've been a rookie. <laughs> oh, Tim's taking shots at oh, you yeah. early here. Second down and five from the eye. Casey Glossin, good protection. Little timing pass to the tight end incomplete. Oh, Jason Witten so close. Casey Glossin, 62% completion rate early in this season. Nearly 600 yards passing. He picked up 309 last week against LSU. Two touchdowns and three interceptions. And he was booed a little bit in that first quarter when he threw the two picks yeah, against two, the Tigers. Two touchdowns, just trying to force the ball early. He settled down and played outstanding in the second half of that ball game. He'll be, he'll, he'll be fine. He will be fine. He's a good, good quarterback. And you got Peyton Manning who you can call at any time for some advice. He'll be all right, I got a feeling. Now, how about that connection? Oh, boy. Peyton Manning still very tied closely to Tennessee. From the shotgun, three wide, four wide receivers. Clawson again to the tight end. Boy, he's hit and knocked back. Witten's a big target, too. Andre, 6'5", 265. And Tim Wansley at 172 said, you know what? I don't care. You're going backwards. They got the matchup to play before with uh, with, with Witten on the outside against Boss Bailey matched up. He beat him off the line of scrimmage in case of Boston just over Jordan. He tried to get the same matchup again. Georgia went base defense and kept the cornerback out there. He made a fantastic tackle. Tim Walls is with a, on a big guy who weighs about 265 pounds. Back to putt, Dustin Colquitt. His dad, Craig, punted here. Went on to play for the Steelers in a high, high hanger. Damian Gray at the 20 falls back to the 19 yard line. Went on a special teams play that you're not seeing. Kick catch and interference on the kicking team. Violation of the two yard belt. Five yards, first down. That's the referee today, Tom Ritter. And so a first down at the 25. 7 3 our score, Tennessee. David Green goes back to work. Good play fake. Throws complete to the tight end. And rumbling is Randy McMichael, the junior from Fort Valley, Georgia. Andre Lott yeah. able to bring him down. You see the left-hand quarterback, David Green, running right here. It just finds his tight end out in the flat here. Just gives it to him really fast for a first down. Good job by David Green. A good job of getting his hips and shoulders around to make that throw. Andre, that's a tough throw. Left-hander rolling Absolutely. right. Absolutely. You know that. Going left and throwing right is, is tough as well. Again, nice play fake. Up and over the middle. Picked off! Rashad Baker! Baker taken down at the 17-yard line. He's got speed, runs a 10-700 meter, and nearly able to break it for six. Yeah, I don't really understand this throw, Craig. It's across the middle of the field. He's trying to work his slot receiver who's got man-to-man -man in the middle. Just a bad throw into the, into the arms of Rashad Baker. Harris just play action pass, and he tries to actually force one. High throw, Rashad Baker just there to receive the, the interception. Almost broke it for a touchdown. Damian Gary, the intended receiver, the right into the hands of Baker, who took it back 41 yards, and now Tennessee in fine field position, already up 7-3. Casey Clawson sets and throws, end zone, touchdown! <laughs> Leonard Scott!
Casey Clawson works the pocket like a textbook quarterback. Drops back, pulls it down, starts to run with his eyes still down the field and finds Leonard Scott in the end zone. I mean, just a fabulous job of stepping up in the pocket. There's nothing there. He's keeping his eyes down the field and finding Leonard Scott in the end zone. First touchdown of the season for Scott. Well, how strange a week ago. The booze against LSU as Clawson struggled with two interceptions here in the first quarter, two touchdown throws. Oh, they're singing Rocky Top in Knoxville. Tennessee strikes quickly on top of Georgia now, 14 to three. Six seconds, one play. Impressive. 17 yards. Impressive. Clawson, five of six in this first quarter for 46 yards and two touchdowns. You can tell he has a feel today. He's seeing the field, everything's kind of slowing down. You either, when you come out, you're either kind of fuzzy and things happen really fast or they they happen almost in slow motion today it looks like Casey it's happening for him in slow motion good kickoff to Gibson at the goal line Gibson weaves his way to the 20 Gibson at the 25 Gibson at the 30 nice return weaving his way through traffic and so Georgia down 14-3 good field position a 31 yard return Georgia almost in a position now, Craig, where they have to respond with some type of score just to get some momentum back. You've given up an interception. You go down the first play of the drive, they score a touchdown on you. you got to control the football, move it down the field, have some positive things happen in a hostile environment. Last week, David Green with 298 yards so far today, 50%, 4 of 8 for 40 yards. You talk about hostile. Oh, you just boy. look around the stadium. It's all orange. There is a bit of a section of red here. Play action to the flat. Nice catch pulled down. Veron Haynes, the fullback, one of the captains for Georgia. And you know who sold that one. I mean, that was, that was terrific play action by David Green. For a young guy, you just have to be impressed with the way he, he runs the play action. Right here, play action looks out in the flat and hits Veron Hayes. Nobody accounted for him running up the sideline. Just a good job, a good play fake by David Green and finding the fullback up the sideline. 29-yard pickup, first and 10, Tennessee. Up the middle for the power of Musa Smith, averaging 109 yards a game, had 95 last week on 25 carries against Arkansas. Musa Smith, Musa the name standing for Arab Moses in Arabic, and he just kind of parts the Red Sea of his offensive lineman in front of him. He's a fantastic runner, a big, big, strong guy. You know, he shows no real effects of a broken foot that he had in spring. Again, to Musa Smith, running with ease inside the 30 to the 29-yard lines. Boy, just picking his way through. Averaging 4.9 yards a carry coming into this game and good size. Andre 6'1, 212, only 19. And that being a big factor, just a sophomore. And he's going to get better and better. Follows a long line of backs out of the University of Georgia. Edwards and Gray, the two wide receivers, first down at the 29 of Tennessee. Again, the play action in the left. He rolls left, throws incomplete. A little bit high, Randy McMichael, the intended receiver. Michael's a big target, 6'4", about 230. Eddie Moore on his back. A good job of man coverage there by Eddie Moore. Tennessee's going to show David Green a lot of different looks. They want to blitz him. They want to play some man-to-man, -man, and occasionally they'll drop in the zone coverage. You'll see mostly man-to-man -man for David Green today. Jasper Sanks has checked in at the tailback. He'll get the carry off the left side and pops through. One thing, you don't need a lot of room for Jasper Sanks or really even Musa Smith to find their way through this Tennessee front. You know, Jasper Sanks kind of working his way out of the doghouse. Showed up in camp a little bit overweight, 250 or so pounds. Came in, worked his way down to 230, and has gotten his, himself out of the Mark Ricks doghouse. Shotgun formation, third down, and call it five. Green sets up some throws, complete. First down, Edwards at the 16. And that's the 28th consecutive game as Terrence Edwards has hauled down a pass. And I'll tell you what, it was a good job of running the pass route, runs a curl route along the sideline, and comes back to the football because he had man-to-man -man coverage the corner to that side, was barreling down on him to knock the ball away. Good job by Terrence Edwards. First down, Tennessee. Good drive. 
The Bulldogs are put together to the corner. A little time and pass. Batted away, incomplete. Boy, it was floating up there just a little bit for Terrence Edwards, and Teddy Gaines timed it perfectly. Just a little fade route to the outside. Teddy Gaines does a good job of positioning his body on the inside and forcing the receiver to the sideline. You see him push him out here, forcing him out of bounds. Even if he caught it, he would have been out of bounds. Good job by Teddy Gaines. David Green, 6 of 12, 77 yards and a touchdown that led to the last touchdown for Tennessee. Oh, tough catch. Did they wrestle it away? They're going to call him down inside the 10-yard line. That's going to bring some boos from this crowd. Andre Lott battling with uh, Michael Johnson. Andre Lott being their leader in the secondary, talking to him. He, he, he said that we, we will blitz David Green. We will play man-to-man. -man. Look at this, how he just holds on, just fights and fights. Andre Lott eventually comes up with the football, but the referee blows it dead. Well, they stack that backfield. Third and short. Flags are down. Hand off to Smith. Close, but a flag down around the eight-yard line. Musa Smith, just like Travis Stevens, they run the football, and it, the pile always seems to go forward. Always, just powerful, two powerful guys. One a big guy, Musa Smith, 6'1", 212. There is Travis no foul. Being a smaller guy. The formation was legal. We had six or seven men on the line of scrimmage. So they're going to pick up the flag, Andre. The formation, they now say legal. And now another field timeout to check for the first down. I believe they're going to have to bring the chains out. I think it's a situation here where Georgia almost has to go for this first down just to break the momentum up and just create some type of emotion, positive emotion along the sideline for the players. It's going to be close. Not the football. It's short. So fourth down and very short. And no hesitation whatsoever. There's Mark Rick in his first year. Bulldogs off to a 2-1 start. David Green has got his instructions. And now this crowd alive. Tenth play of the drive. Double tight set with McMichael and Watson. And again, they load up that backfield with an extra blocking back, J.T. Wall. Up and over. Musa Smith. Yeah, I knew I liked Musa Smith the, when I read his bio and it said that his hobby his hobby, Craig, was sleep. <laughs> he liked to sleep. I knew I liked him because I played with a guy in Detroit who would sleep in the meeting. <laughs> Barry Sanders, and he could run it well. It's close enough to bring the chains out again. 218 left in this exciting opening quarter in Knoxville. Tennessee 14, Georgia 3. I don't think they got it. Uh, no! Oh. Wow. Georgia goes into their goal line offense here. Just short yardage and goal line. Musa Smith trying to get, get the first down up and over the top. And just a wave of Tennessee defenders there to stop him just short. Good job there by the Tennessee, Tennessee defense. Boy, Andre, the, the first time I looked at that, I thought it was easily a first down. Absolutely. I don't know if the spot was good, but yet it's now Tennessee football inside their own 10-yard line and a 14-3 lead. Flags are down. Stevens, the ball carrier, but a flag down at the eight yard line. Now, this will be a test now for Georgia. So close and a very impressive drive, but stopped by that tough front of Tennessee. Just a, an emotional letdown for the Georgia team here. Driving down the field, you have some On the success. defense, five yard penalty, we play first down. I've been impressed with the Tennessee offensive line. They've made some changes. Sean, Sean, Young, Sean Young making his first start of the season. And just some other move, Anthony Herrera over to right guard. But they've still been able to run the football effectively on a good Georgia front four. Billy Washington, the lone wide receiver. They hand it off in a big hole, breaking through Travis Stevens to the 25. Well, he's nearly got a quarter under his belt, Tim, that's for sure. 14-3, Tennessee.
Tennessee. How about that Troy State score with wow, Miami? That's surprising. Wow. Here in Knoxville, first and ten, Tennessee. And again, the holes are gaping for Travis Stevens. You know, when you have holes, Andre, that big, and you talk about can he take the pounding, there's no pounding involved here. It really isn't. And he can carry it. You talk about 30 carries a game is what he's averaging. I could go down and run it 30 times a game with those kind of holes. Man, it's it, but you can't take anything away from Travis Stevens. He's just a great back who follows his blocks. He's been here. He's a fifth-year senior and he knows how to run the football between the tackles. Jacobs uh, for the tackle for Georgia, and again on the ground, they're going to bread and butter. Just the ground game, this time it's gonna be Larkins. Corey Larkins, who's a redshirt freshman, former defensive back, turned tailback. That's his 11th carry of the season. And they like all their running backs, Travis Stevens, Corey Larkins, and then you get Cedric Houston. You may see Troy Fleming line up in the backfield when they go to the one back set. Larkin stays in. Stevens gets a, a rest after nine carries for 71 yards. Third down at two. He works it outside. Good pursuit by Georgia, but they let him go. It's going to be close to the first down. Depends on the mark. They're going to bring the chains out. Charles Grant with the pursuit to make the tackle for Georgia. There's a look at Casey Clawson. Out of Northridge, California. There's really no room there for, for Corey Larkins to run and just does a good job of getting north and south pretty much all on his own. By a half of football, and that's what Georgia needed on that last spot. I thought Georgia had the first down on the last uh, that last drive, but boy, come up short in Tennessee's offense, the way they're clicking right now are gonna make you pay. See if Tennessee will run another play before the first quarter clock runs dry. They're gonna let it run. <laughs> that ends the first quarter with the score, Tennessee 14, Georgia three. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. The second quarter here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, on top of Georgia, 14-3. Casey Clawson with a pair of touchdown throws, one to Kelly Washington and the other one to, uh, to Leonard Scott. Little pitch out, fumble, it's on the turf. And Clawson hustles back along with Travis Stevens. Craig Bowler, Jack, and Andre Ware. Can I see the pose right now? There you, <laughs> there you go. I got a trophy winner. 1989. Andre, so far, it's been Tennessee's ground game. Right there, that was the first mistake we've seen really by Tennessee. The ball goes on the turf, but Stevens and Clawson covers up. They've got a, done a good job running the football. Travis Stevens, big holes in front of him. And it opens up the passing game for, for Casey Clawson. He's done a good job of controlling the offense, running the offense. He's been effective. So a loss of eight, second and 18, and not much. Georgia pursuing very well up front. All right, thank you, Tim. Quarterback with that option. He ran that just once or twice. Only on short yardage and goal line situation. Third down, 17 for Tennessee from the shotgun. Three wideouts. They spread the backs. Clawson wants the deep ball, man coverage, incomplete. Good battle down that sideline. Hometown crowd wants a flag. They will not get one, but good coverage by Bruce Thornton on Leonard Scott. And Thornton's been the quarterback that's been picked on quite a bit, especially last week. Really has, actually, the past two weeks. And talking to Tim Wansley, he, uh, he said he had a conversation with Bruce. Don't get yourself down, play a good ball game, let the pass be the pass. You got an opportunity to come out today and play a, a, a good ball game. Good coverage there by Bruce Storm. Cole Quitt will punt, and the left footer gets it away. Pedaling back, Damian Gray at the 30, Gray at the 40, Gray at the 45, 50. Gray with one man to beat. 30, 25, goodbye, Georgia with the touchdown. What a beautiful...
beautiful return. There is a flag down, 72 yards, but I'm guessing that's going to be for, um, what would you think, Andre? Showing off just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, just that, that, that like to like the end zone. On the kicking team, it feels good. So a 72-yard return after the 44-yard punt by Colquitt. Great, that gets you back into a ball game fast. The special teams play. It it just it's unbelievable how fast one special teams play can change the, the outcome of a football game. Or the, it, it, you look here, it's just a little bit too much, too much celebration. They're gonna have to actually kick almost a field goal. It's good. That does turn the tables. 13 12 left. Damon Gary with a big punt return for a touchdown. You see the punt. Gary just takes the punt in, and it's all Damon Gary. Sets, the, sets it here and but right up the middle of the field. Makes two guys miss. Then all of a sudden, it's he and the punter. One move outside and then back to the inside, and he is long gone. 72 yards for Damian Gary. And remember, they lost their kick return man, Reggie Brown, to a knee. And so Gary comes in and runs one back 72 yards. And the kick is three yards deep, and Scott will take a knee. And all of a sudden, tempo has changed in Knoxville. It's excellent when your second guy can come in and break one for a touchdown. Because Reggie Brown was the fastest guy on the Georgia roster. And to have him go down last week in last week's ball game and have a guy like Damian Gary step up and break one, that's big for the, off for the uh, sideline of the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, by the way, the last time a punt returned for a touchdown, Chris McCraney against uh, Texas Tech back in 93, a 45-yarder. This one goes 72. So 14-10, Tennessee on top of Georgia after the long punt return by Damian Gary. Crossing with the pitch, Stevens. And now the Georgia defense with good pursuit. Second down, 11. Crossing, three-step drop. Washington turns up, feel always turning up. Field of the 25 yard line. We'll keep an eye on uh, Vieira who uh, left the field with that shoulder. Washington just continues to impress me. He hadn't been in football, organized football for four years. You watch film on the guy and he catches a hitch route. He's right up the middle of the field. Sometimes when need be, he turns outside. He gets positive yards after the catch. Some guys that have played it for the last 15 years and are in, in the NFL don't know how to do that. Three catches for Washington. Tennessee, two of four on third downs. And now Crossing out of the pocket, heads to the sideline. Football on the deck. Well, he took a shot around the 27-yard line. Wansley delivered the blow. He's a big, big, tough kid, though. 6'4", 210. Not a whole lot of room to run the football along the sideline. No one open. He just tucks it. He's got to tuck that football away. He's carrying it out there. Tries to go back in. Tucks it late. Look at this, he's just got to put the football away. Good job, maybe just getting out of bounds a little bit earlier. Trying to trying to play for the first down, though, on third down. I, I, you got to like the kid's courage, though. Now Colquitt will punt once again to the dangerous return man. Now we can label him that after the 72-yard return. Damian Gary inside his own 35-yard line. Good snap, and the left footer again boots. Low line drive kick, takes a little bounce up around the 34-yard line. Gary drags a volunteer to the 44. 40-yard kick and a 10-yard return. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot in college football will continue after this word from your local station. Now some dark clouds still hanging around Leland Stadium. It's not chasing the crowd out of here, I'll tell you that. A lot of orange, as they you aren't, see. They aren't going anywhere. And yeah, there are Bulldogs fans. <laughs> hey, Halloween's still three, uh, what, three weeks away. Nice cape. 
second quarter, 11-22 left. Green sets and throws, connects. Oh, what a catch. McMichael, the junior. And Rashad Baker hit him up around the numbers. What a big, big lick. You see the tight end, the tight end just going to cross across the middle of the field. Here you see him work down on the inside, a little post route, beats his man, and makes a fabulous catch before Rashad Baker knocks him, <laughs> just kind of sends him back. McMichael, 228, 6'4". Two catches now for 32 yards. That was 19. Back to the ground. Musa Smith wrapped up at the 30. Mark Rick is in a, in, a, in a mode now. He's really comfortable calling plays. A pass on first down, a run on second down, kind of mixing things up against this Tennessee, the aggressive Tennessee defense. Musa Smith, as Mark Rick looks on, seven carries. 33 yards the hard way. Two wide outs to the top of your screen. Green sets and throws. Incomplete. A quick out to Freddie Gibson, the intended receiver. That stops the clock with a 10.39 left in the first half. But Georgia out gaining Tennessee, 150 to 122. Yeah, Tennessee playing from the short field most of the afternoon. Tennessee showing blitz, and now there's movement and flags. Andre, interesting question. Will Overstreet, their, their terrific right defensive end, you wonder if they miss him today? I think you have to. He's such a talent. You talk to Coach John Chavis. He, uh... An offside, offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Constantine Richmond starting for Will Overstreet. He's talked to uh, Coach Chavis, and he feels like Will Overstreet's one of the best defensive ends in the entire country, not just if you're losing a good football player, one of the best in the nation. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Again, the play fake, the left-hander throws, threads it. He make that catch, you wow. gotta be kidding. At the seven, McMichael with some terrific receptions on this drive. What a bullet delivered by Green. Just a crossing route coming from the other side of the field, and McMichael just stretches out with two between two defenders and makes a fabulous grab. McMichael, three catches for 50 yards already in the first half. Well, that one goes 18, and not much on the run as they stack it up around the 10. Oh, Tech up 21 on the road. Impressive start this afternoon. Here it's 14-10 Tennessee, but Georgia looking at second down and goal, and a lot of time left in this opening half, and Tennessee's defensive coordinator, John Chavis, looking on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven men in the box. Green sets up, oh, what a pass. Touchdown, Georgia, Fred Gibson. yards just a little under route here by the receiver it's cleared out by the tight end going up the middle of the field and David Green just does a good job of seeing it out and delivering the football on time Gibson the freshman he did not have a reception Andre before today had some kickoff returns a week ago, but Gibson from 15 yards, and boy, Georgia on the road up by three. Georgia on the road leading 17-14, and the Bulldogs go seven plays, 56 yards. Gibson, his first career reception goes for a touchdown, 15 yards. Welcome to uh, SEC football. Pretty good way to get your first catch have it go for a touchdown just a, a good job by David Green of reading it out tight end takes the free safety out of the play and a little slant route underneath good timing good job David Green 10 out of 17 one touchdown 136 excuse me one interception one 136 yards and a touchdown and he's hit seven different receivers I mean you, you're keeping everybody he, happy. he's moving it around kick is away Leonard Scott no chance for a return Oh, 
let's take a look at our SEC moment presented by Sonic. We'll take you back September 6, 1980. Georgia's freshman running back, Herschel Walker, breaks a few tackles and steams rolls over his future Cowboy teammate, Bill Bates, for his first collegiate touchdown. Georgia went on to defeat Tennessee that day, 16-15. That's the last time Georgia won here at Knoxville, 1980. That's a long time. It's been a long, long time coming for the Bulldogs. 14 unanswered points by Georgia. Bulldogs lead 17-14. Tennessee going back to work, and they're sniffing out that ground game. Good tackle, Tony Gilbert busting through to drag down Travis Stevens. Not a whole lot of room for Travis Stevens to run, but the Georgia Bulldog defense, they've got confidence. Ever since that punt return, just kind of energetic, it interjected some energy into that defense. It kind of overflows through the whole football team. They're playing now with a lot of positive emotion. It was 14-3 Tennessee after the first quarter, and as you mentioned, this second quarter has been all Tennessee, all Georgia. Gary, 72-yard punt return, and then Gibson's touchdown, and Georgia leads 17-14. Second down, 10. Again, through the middle, big hole, Stevens heading to the sideline at the 40, Stevens at the 35-30, Stevens at the 20, and ridden out of bounds at the 16-yard line. They are just going to ride the back of Travis Stevens. Here, just a handoff and a big cutback. Just no one in the hole to bring him down. Terrell Vieira was there to make a play, couldn't arm tackle him, tries to get back in the picture. But Travis Stevens, he shows, shows some speed. We ask him, are you a power back or are you a speed back? He says, Andre, I'm both. I can do it all. Boy, he loved Walter Payton he because, loved because Payton did have the power and the speed and then always quickly to jump up. 127 yards in the first half on 14 carries for Travis Stevens and his fourth career 100-yard game and a timeout on the field. 8.24 to go in this track meet. We'll be back. Well, what Philip Fulmer, Andre must be thinking. Had a comfortable 14-3 lead after one and now Georgia up 17-14, but his balls in scoring position at the 16-yard line. By the way, that run of 64 yards was Tennessee's first first down this quarter. Wow. Wow. Witten, the tight end in motion, Clawson. Flips it out, and Witten, the big target, hard to take down, but wrestled out around the 13-yard line by Jermaine Phillips. Yeah, Jermaine Phillips is a leader of the that actually, actually on the entire team. We asked the coaching staff, who are the leaders on the team? Jermaine Phillips, his name popped up first. Flags are down, and here's Tom Ritter. Offside, on the defense, five yards, to first down. We kind of liken this football game the two boxers standing in the middle of the ring just kind of swinging at each other. Tennessee will hit you, hits Georgia with a punch. Georgia comes back, they hit Tennessee with a punch, and now Tennessee's coming back. They've, they've got it ready to, to swing again. First down and five. And again, not much as Corey Larkins is ridden down. David Jacobs, the nose tackle's been active. Makes the tackle to your letterman out of Atlanta. Really has, does a good job of using his hands, fighting off blocks, his quickness, he's really quick from the nose tackle position and gets himself in a position to make a lot, a lot of tackles. Andre, we talked to Jacobs, and you know, he said his bench is now up to 405. I said 405. Well, he goes, you know, I'm, I'm gaining strength every day. He's been on that summer workout program, and he, his bench press, he's, he's uh, up to 70 pounds. 70 pounds. Second down and five. Stevens hops past the eight and then hit and dropped. Boy, he caught some air, but Jacobs again <laughs> flew around and made the hit. It's one of those Walter Payton moves. You get inside and you right up the middle of the field. And here, just go, I'm gonna go punish him. I don't care if he's a defensive lineman weighing 265. I'm 5'9, five, five, 190 pounds. I'm gonna bring the initial lick to the defense. And that's how Travis Stevens runs the football. He's gonna deliver the blow. Stevens will get a rest. Tennessee, Andre, two of five today on third down conversions. Here it's third down and three from the nine. 
Witten in motion. Casey Clawson through protection, throws incomplete. Boy, a tough, dangerous throw. Witten had it momentarily, but good coverage uh, led by Gilbert and Boss Bailey. Casey Clawson got away with one there. He throws into the middle of the field. It's actually almost triple coverage. Tony Gilbert and Boss Bailey right in the middle, trying to hit Witten on a little turnaround inside. And just uh, just trying to squeeze the football into a small area. For those coaches, you can see first it was Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator. A little stress on the face. Joe Fulmer had some stress on his face. Today's attendance, by the way, 107,592, 10th largest at Mueller. 25-yard field goal attempt. Alex Walls, the kick is away and through the uprights. So the battle continues 17 all in Knoxville well you know wherever you go you still, still see people uh, remembering the tragedies of New York Washington outside in Pennsylvania yeah. still on the minds of so many 17 all Tennessee and Georgia 113 left opening half third down 15 Lawson throws underneath it's caught. Stevens. Stacked up still. Second effort. Did they whistle him down? I don't think they did. Now one official now steps in. Looks like and line the line yeah. At the 18-yard line. Hit by Gilbert. Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker. You just have to be impressed with Casey Clawson's poise in the pocket. Worked in the pocket like, like a 10-year NFL veteran. Stepping up. And that's got to be a direct... Reflection from working with with uh, with Peyton Manning over the summer. A guy works the pocket as if you know he's a, a fifth-year senior. McClawson told us tries to talk to Peyton Manning twice a week. Made a phone call on Thursday night, but not able to reach the Colts quarterback. I'm sure they've talked before a game. And Tennessee will use a timeout. Their final timeout. Georgia has won if they need it. 20 ticks left on the first on this first half card. Neyland Stadium, third largest in the country. Michigan, ranked number one. Penn State, number two. And right here in Knoxville, number three. It holds officially 104,079, Andre, but... They, they've packed in 108 plus many uh, many occasions. 108 last week. I just wonder where the extra 4,000, 3,000 seat. Where, where are the extra 3,000 fans? I'll see. I'm looking for pull-out bleachers. Is it standing bleachers, room I, somewhere? Or something? Must be. Oh, there's a lot of people standing. Yeah, up around that uh, that that top corridor here. I tell you, when they start jumping and beating their feet on the on the the steps, it gets kind of scary. <laughs> the whole place starts to shake. Alex Walls will trot in to try the field goal. And a smart decision, I think. This will be a 34-yard attempt. Walls hit a 29-yarder earlier in this quarter. Good snap, good hole, and a chip shot from 34 is no good. And look at Phil Fulmer. An impressive drive, and Walls can't make it from 34. A, a good snap, a good hold. Just pulls it a little bit left. Good hold, just pulls it a little bit left. I'll tell you, Coach Fulmer was just a little bit disappointed because I think he was in the process of maybe going for it on fourth down and, and second guessing, okay, we'll kick the field goal and go into halftime up 20, 20 to 17. <laughs> So 17 all after two quarters here in Knoxville. Georgia on the road. They were down 14-3 after the first, but rally back, and it's tied at 17. We're at halftime. 17-17, Georgia, Tennessee. Now let's go to Tim Brando in New York City. Tim. All right, Craig and Andre coming up. Spencer Tillman and I will have all of today's action, scores and highlights. Could this be the Gamecocks' first 5-0 start since 88? We'll see after this message and a word from you in local stations. Well, it's halftime in Knoxville, Georgia on the road against Tennessee. 17 all between the Bulldogs and the Volunteers. Craig Lowerjack back along with 1989 Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. Andre.
was a game where Tennessee was so close to pulling away in that first quarter, but yet uh, Georgia comes in here with some big plays and seems to be unfazed by this crowd. They quiet things down in the second quarter. Really, it's a tribute to the coaching staff and not allowing the elements or 107,000 fans to get uh, involved in the game. Here you see Casey Clawson just over the shoulder to Kelly, Kelly Washington, but was it really a catch? Big play for Georgia in the first half, the punt return. Damian Gary right up the field, good move on the punter and just goes for six points. Just a good job by a Georgia team here in the first half. Nice dive into the end zone, which uh, was flagged. You look at the first half numbers, first downs nearly even the rushing yards. Tennessee with 139, total yards 262 to 179. This game pretty clean in turnovers except the one pick that uh, the green threw, and then Tennessee turned around and do a touchdown. And here's David Green and Casey Clawson compared. 11 of 19 for Green, 135, 12 of 18. Andre for, for Clawson, 123. Clawson had the two touchdowns, and David Green able to shake off that pick and got the and got a touchdown. Maybe a situation where whichever quarterback has the ball last wins the football game. Now remember, Tennessee won the toss, so they wanted the, uh, to start the third quarter with the football, so Georgia will kick away. You know, last week, a very important story that came out of the, the Tennessee LSU game was was the John Henderson, the, the 2000 Outland Trophy winner, who really challenged his team and said, let's go out and play Tennessee football, which they did and, and beat LSU. You wonder if, if Henderson didn't have to have another talk in the locker room. And that kick bounces out of the end zone, so the Bulls will start this drive in their own 20-yard line. All right, here's our AFLAC trivia question. Who was the only player to win the Outland Trophy twice? Going Henderson. back to your point on, uh, on John Henderson and his talk last week in the locker room, I mean, he directly challenged Casey Clawson to up his game. This is your team. You're the leader of this football team. Go out and play like you're the leader or stay in the locker room. Well, Casey Clawson did it. I wonder if Casey went and challenged John this week because John's been a little quiet on the defensive side of the ball. He's been bothered by the high ankle sprain, but uh, has not been uh, too active this afternoon. So we start the third quarter tied at 17. Tennessee with the football, and they go to what uh, was so effective in the first half, and that's the run to Stevens, but not much. Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker, right there to make the stop. Gilbert led this team in total tackles a year ago with 96 out of Macon, Georgia. Tony Gilbert, just a presence in the middle of the in the middle of the Georgia defense, around the football all the time, falling into plays, making plays, reaching out. Just a good, solid, sound football player. Second down and 10. That's the play card of Tennessee offensive coordinator Randy Sanders. He was a quarterback here back in the mid-80s. Second down and 10. No gain on that run by Travis Stevens. Ooh, a little stumble on the ball, and he's uh, down at the 15-yard line. As a quarterback, you hate when that happens. Center just trying to uh, to make a pass block for you. Get in his pass set, and he sets steps right down on your foot. You can't get back. One thing, it's embarrassing because it looks like everybody you just just falling down but uh, the center or the guard tends to do that to a quarterback every once in a while you'll have a play like that it's bound to happen it happens to all of us a loss of four third down and 14 Washington Graham and Scott with three wideouts for Tennessee shotgun for Clawson Tennessee runs and a few boos to start this third quarter, so not much for the Volunteers. Gilbert and Boss Bailey teamed up to make the hit. Not an opportunity, Andre, for Georgia to have some good field position here. You've got to be impressed with the way Georgia has approached this football game, really had one, the one big mistake, the interception by David Green. But they played very well in the first half and kept themselves in the ball game. Well, they get the punt away. It takes a big Georgia bounce. That's like the seven iron that you pop in there. Go backspin, huh? And backspin it back to the 30, call it the 39-yard line. So Georgia with fine field position, only a 21-yard kick. Bulldogs have it when we come back.
Georgia, Tennessee, 17 all, 12.56 left third quarter. Volunteers unable to move on their first series. Now Georgia will get their chance with a pitch out. Musa Smith stops in his tracks, reverses direction, and picks up a couple of hard yards to the 38-yard line. Musa Smith, by the way, in that first half uh, with nine carries for just 30 yards. Yeah, just a little play there out of the chapter out of the West Coast offense, a little misdirection play. You send the fullback one way, you spin out and kick it back to the tailback going the other way. Georgia trying to push with that hurry-up offense. They, uh, they give a yard gain to Musa Smith. Back to the ground. Smith, 32, rumbles in that stack of orange to the 36-yard line, and the charge led by Eddie Moore out of South Pittsburgh. Well, I would think the confidence of Georgia. I'm sure it was a calm locker room. I don't think it was that way with Tennessee. No, I think it was very emotional locker room. I'm very trying to get some type of motivation going, and get the guys to play at a little higher level. You're at home, you're in front of 107. Come on, let's go out, guys, let's answer the bell. Well, this crowd beginning to get a little antsy themselves. Up on third down at seven. They bring some pressure. Green sidesteps and throws. Incomplete. A sliding grab by Michael Johnson, but out of bounds. But what a throw by David Green. Just the receiver not able, Michael Johnson not able to get his feet down. But what a throw by David Green. Here he's just got pressure. They send the blitz. Jabari, Jabari Green right here. It looks like he may have got one official. Looks like he wants to rule him in. The other one's saying no way. It is close. It was close, Greg. So now that brings up a punting situation for Georgia. Jonathan Kilgo in at midfield. This will be an opportunity for one of those uh, punch poop shots inside the 10 or the 5-yard line. High hanger. They got it down at the 1. Great punt coverage by Georgia. What a heads-up play by Wansley. Tim Wansley. It was Absolutely. Tim Wansley. One of the leaders on the football team, but what a heads-up play. Feels his momentum taking him into the end zone and just kicks the ball back out right here. He downs right there. The official comes in and rolls the ball down. Good job. And we're going to put you inside that Tennessee huddle. Not a bad seat in the house, and maybe the best seat's right there for Phil Fulmer. Working the come over as this uh, drive will start inside Tennessee's one-yard line. A little keeper, Lawson, just trying to give the ball some, some breathing room, and he pushes the ball to the three-yard line. A lot of offensive coordinators, when you're in a situation like this, you take a three-step drop and just flop it out to a wide-up, throw the fade route along the sideline. You're looking for either a big hit or pass interference. you got Kelly Washington out there. Phenomenal athlete who can make plays for you. They want to they want to take a look at that. And Andre, this this drive may test the young confidence of, of a Casey Cross. And now this isn't cocky confidence. This is just young confidence that both uh, Phil Fulmer and uh, Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, uh, they, they appreciate very much. And a quick throw. Did he make the grab? It was Washington down on a knee. And Washington will call it complete at the seven-yard line. Give him some breathing room. Coach Brian Van Gorda, he's called a pretty conservative game defensively. Not a whole lot of blitzes on Casey Clausen. Down on this end of the field, though, you wonder if he's going to bring a, bring some extra pressure. A couple of guys, a couple of extra guys around the line of scrimmage here. You know, Georgia's defensive identity may be changing, too, with, with this whole new coaching staff. We were, we were told by most of the defensive players, this is a fly-around defense. Yeah. Third down and four. Clausen pedals through. Complete first down to the 19-yard line. Once again, Casey Clausen to Kelly Washington. You're watching a guy, I can't say it enough, you're watching a guy who did not play receiver in high school, has not played organized football for four years. He's been playing baseball for the Florida Marlins baseball organization. We watched him throw, a, we watched him throw in practice. He's a third, he was a third baseman shortstop in the Marlins organization. Folks, he can let it fly. Absolutely. First down 
and 10 from the 19 yard line. Not much, but on second effort, look at Travis Stevens as he bowls his way to the 24 yard line. Here's our AFLAC trivia question. Who is the only player to win the Outland Trophy twice? And here's the answer. Dave Remington from Nebraska, 1981, 1982. And there's that due back in the 80s uh, for Dave Remington. Yeah, it's a uh, good, good Nebraska football oh. team. Opened up some big holes for fraternity brother Mike Rozier, Heisman fraternity brother. And of course, the question now here down in Knoxville around the country, can John Henderson duplicate that, that feat by Remington? Stevens again. Spins and picks up two, three extra yards. His second effort is very impressive. Very impressive. Terrell Vieira, the free safety, came up to make the tackle. But he was stopped maybe for what? A two-yard game, but picks up five. He's a north and south type runner. Gets up the field. The, the pile's going to go in his direction, in his favor. But he's got quick feet as well. Gets in and out of the line of scrimmage and has a burst to get around the corner as well. Well, he waited his turn, a fifth-year senior, and, of course, some great backs here at Tennessee, Jamal Lewis, Travis Henry, and now it's Travis Stevens. Well over 100 yards today, and again, battling, stopped and pushed back, led by David Jacobs, who's had a fine football game for Georgia. Yeah, David Jacobs always around the football. Playing off the, the, the offensive lineman to his side. Just steps inside, rolls his way back, and falls right into the play. So Colquitt will punt from his own 15-yard line. And Damian Gary, who returned a second-quarter punt, 72 yards for a touchdown awaits. Colquitt does not want the ball in. Gary's hands and it bounces out of bounds around the 39-yard line. So once again, though, Georgia was a pretty good field position, Andre. 32-yard kick, 7.42 left in the third, and we'll be back. Craig Bowler, Jack, Andre Ware, third quarter, 7.42 left here. As Ugga, that's Ugga 6, looks on. 17-17 Bulldog Volunteers. Lisa Smith, three yards, and the pounding is getting uh, pretty tough in that front line. Again, likes to run between the tackles. Second down, seven. Green throws, Smith in the flat, breaks a tackle, and still lunges forward to the 45. Took a hard hit, low by Eddie Moore. Yeah, David Green does a good job of play action to, to Mr. Smith. Excuse me, Jasper Sankson hits his fullback, Veron Hayes, out in the flat. What you don't want to have happen if you're Tennessee is for this Georgia offense to get hot. You've allowed them to hang around all afternoon. Tennessee showing blitz. They try to time the snap count. They bust the line, and now a flag. Got to watch the football listening to the quarterback's voice he jumps off sides here's tom ritter offside on the defense five yard penalty results in a first down Andre, how many times did you try to change count uh, count cadence calls did, did you really did you really mess up a defense that way usually on third down sometimes on first you like to do it you get your get yourself a free five yards but short yarded situations third down and four where the five yards will get you a first down. You change the cadence up, bark it hard on, the, on a hard count. Try to get a guy to jump. It gives Georgia a first down at midfield. Green, play fake. Chase from behind and through as he was tackled. We're going to call that incomplete at midfield. Henderson was on the motor. I mean, Henderson got some help from Lott, who uh, was on the coverage. Uh, big John Henderson, he's closing in from the back. Gets David Green around the V, around his right around the knee area, and he was able to uh, to get it off. John Henderson finally waking up in the second half. You know he's had the high ankle sprain as we mentioned, but you know, a lot of the coaches said, "Hey, you got 300 pounds you're carrying around. It's tough to come back on the run." Oh, what a throw! Did he get his foot down? He did. What a catch by Terrence Edwards along the sideline. Edwards with only one reception in the first quarter. 
and Edwards with an acrobatic move on the far side. They're gonna call it complete. Yeah, David Green rolling left to, the, to his favorite side, throws it outside along the sideline. Terrence Edwards, one foot. That's all you need yep. in college football. Good call. Third down and short. Sinks, Jasper Sinks, close to the first down. Depends on the mark, Eddie Moore. Had him wrapped up. Really has gotten himself into shape down to around 230 pounds, maybe a little lighter. Was able to run the football a lot more effectively for Coach Mark Rick and his offensive staff. Timeout on the field, so they'll bring the chains out. And just short. All right. Mark Rick, first year head coach. What do you do? Georgia's, Georgia's kind of, they, they have to feel like they've been getting, they're on the road because they've come up short on every measurement today, it seems like. They always go into fourth down. Even on a fourth down, they had it. Came up a little bit short. They're going to talk about it. They're going to take a timeout. Their first of this half they'll use. And so David Green makes his way to the sideline. 6.02 left. All right, thank you, Tim. Walter's son finding the end zone for Miami. I'll tell you, that, that program hasn't missed a beat as Butch Davis made his way to the NFL ranks with Cleveland, but left behind a lot of talent. A lot of talent. He recruited well while he was there. He left a, just a, a stable full of talent there in Miami. Hey, I've been impressed with, uh, with, with Ken Dorsey at quarterback. If I had to, uh, to go out on a limb and... and uh, pick a Heisman favorite or a leader at this point in the season. I think I, I, I would uh, point it at, uh, at Kent Dorsey. Well, they brought the entire offensive 11 to the sideline. Now they're going to bring them out and punt. So fourth and short, Kilgo will punt. And remember last time he was able to bury the ball inside the one-yard line. Rashad Baker awaits the punt around the 11-yard line. Angles to the corner. And another big hop. Look at that coverage. Well, game ball is going to the special teams on punt coverage. Again, they down it at the one. Tennessee in a hole one more time. Well, let's take a look at our Exxon and Mobile scoring recap. Washington got Tennessee on the board. That seven-yard touchdown. Bennett comes back with a 29-yard field goal. Scott from 17 yards. It looks like Tennessee. Andre was going to pull away. But then Gary runs it back 72 yards to make it 14-10. Gibson, the 15-yard touchdown. And then Walls ties it with a 25-yard field goal. And that's where we stand, 17-17 in Knoxville. Yeah, Damian Gary, just a, a huge turnaround in terms of emotions and getting Georgia back in the game with that punt return. I know one thing that Tennessee will work on this week is, is, is punt returns. Double tight set once again as the Volunteers start this drive inside their one yard line. And off big hole. And now you can breathe if you're a Volunteer fan. Veal, the nose tackle, made the stop on Travis Stevens, but again, the seam parted and he took his time picking his way through. Really has, didn't waste any time. Just north and south right there. Head and shoulders down, getting positive yards, and just tough, tough running to, to get some breathing room for the offense. Average starting field position this half. Georgia's been at midfield, Tennessee for 10. In the last two drives, it started inside the one. Still a scoreless third quarter. Second effort, push back. The guys in white say no. They'll mark his progress to about the eight-yard line. So a pickup of one. That brings up third down and call it two. Sean Jones around the football. David Pollock as well. Georgia just kind of clogging up the middle of the defense. They know Tennessee doesn't really want to take or gamble on this end of the field. So they're going to pack more guys inside, eight, nine guys in the box, and force you to pick it up and throw it. 
Gilbert, the middle linebacker for Georgia, good size at 246. I, you know, up front, they go 274 with Adrian. Jacobs is big at 265. Sullivan, 280. Third down. Lawson wants to throw on the run. Oh, had a man, and then quickly the door closed. Bruce Thornton, the sophomore from LaGrange, Georgia, with a big defensive stop. A roll to, to, to Casey Clausen's right side gets flushed out of the pocket just a little bit. A dangerous throw coming back inside, away from his body, across the field. And Bruce Thornton has really answered the, answered the bell today in terms of pass defense. Colquitt, five yards deep in his end zone, and a left footer boots it high. Gary will let this bounce, but again, Georgia in terrific field position at the 43-yard line. Only a 33-yard punt. There's Mark Richt in his first year at Georgia. And Andre, here's what the first-year coaches have done. Vince Dooley, 7-3-1. Ray Goff, 6-6. Six six. Jim Donnan went 5-6. No, Donnan finished with a 40 and 19 record, but still, time for a change, they yeah. said. In that. Wow. So Rick's off to a 2 and 1 start, and boy, would this be something if they can uh, pull off a win here and not do it. David Green somehow escapes trouble and then pulled down at the line of scrimmage at the 43 yard line. Well, that's like 26. A little pitch and catch, not much, but Edwards makes the grab to the 39 yard line. That's a little screen play I've always liked. You roll the quarterback one way, set his feet, and the, the outside receiver's coming underneath with a tackle pulling out. All the stars and stripes are out. You see it everywhere. Third down conversions today. Georgia only one of seven. Here come that 107,000. Yeah. Everyone on their feet at Neyland Stadium. From the shotgun, David Green. Pedals, good coverage, throws, sideline, bodies fly, incomplete, no flags. A couple of players on the deck, but no flags. Teddy Gaines down on coverage for Tennessee. So, fourth down for Georgia. They cannot take advantage of that field position, and right now, it's just punch it down deep. Tennessee can't move. They punt back, and they give credit to the volunteer defense. I think the coaching staff for Georgia right now, they're satisfied that they don't want to make a mistake. They're on the road in a big conference game. You're not going to gamble. That's why Coach Rick didn't go for it on fourth and inches, the possession before. Took a gamble. Defense played well. We're going to try it again. We'll go for the pooch again. Well, Kilgore's been able to kill it twice down inside the one yard line and again takes a hard bounce and this time the coverage can't get down the field fast enough Tennessee with the football at the 20 yard line to the sideline it comes and turning upfield Washington oh stopped on a dime and picked up two more yards to the 32 yard line a first down Tennessee best field position this half John Jones made the tackle. Just the, the pass route here, a six-yard hitch route. He's so big and so strong, he just slings the defender off Bruce Thornton and gets more positive, an extra five yards after the catch. You know, Andre, it's interesting. There was so much talk and hype about Washington, but it's made very clear this, this guy is not a media uh, creation or sensation. Not at all. This young guy knows how to play this game, and it's, it just has the natural talent. First down, volunteers, crossing, throws, incomplete. A, a ball, you got to catch. And Leonard Scott liked to have that one back. Same pass to the, to the other side of the field that was just thrown to Kelly Washington. You got to catch the ball first. But Bruce Thornton was on this side of the field defending Kelly, Kelly Washington. They flip flop him over to the wide side. And what does Casey Clausen do? He goes to that side where Bruce Thornton is. He's got that bullseye on him now. 15 of 23, 152 yards with a pair of early touchdowns. Last week, 309 against LSU in a 26-18 win. Second down, 10 from the 32-yard line. Troy flipping the ball carrier, not much. Tony Gilbert with a nice, uh, with a nice football game today. 
it's that bend but don't break defense. We'll, we'll give up some hitch routes, some six yard hitch routes, but when it's third down, we gotta rally to the football, we gotta play, we gotta keep everything in front of the markers and bring them up short, short of first down. George has been successful doing it so far. And Travis Stevens, the lone back. Tennessee, five of 13 today on third downs. We're looking at third and eight. Three-step drop, Lawson. He wanted Washington to come back to the football, and there's just one instant of just instance of inexperience. Yeah, it's right there. He just for forces a play. He had Bobby Graham in the slot to his right, wide open. He chose to come down down to the bottom of the short side of the field, and that's just falling in love with a with a receiver a little bit too much. Well, Cole quit again, and the punt, and the left footer gets it away under some heavy pressure. Flags are down. Gary at the 32. Gary at the 35. Gary fumbles the football on the deck. Georgia looks like they've covered up. It looked like Ben Watson was able to get there and, and recover the fumble. Two flags down at the 25 and the 28-yard line. The referee threw this flag, but uh, it looks like Tim Walsey may have been blocked in the back into the punter. We'll see here. Here's a call, Tom Ritter, our referee. And two flags, however, we're going to wipe off the running into the kicker because there was a hole on the offense. Tim Walsey was right, and he, he complained to the official that he was blocked into the punter. It turns out he was being held while he was being blocked into the punter. Still discussing where they'll spot this football. That was a 33-yard punt and a six-yard return. Holding on the kicking team, that penalty is declined. To take the result of the play. So a penalty declined. Georgia starts at the 40-yard line. Yeah, once again, good field position. Sooner or later, you mess around with that spread offense of Mark Riggs. They're going to get hot, and if you allow them to hang around, and, and David Green gets a hot hand, look out. Well, this third quarter. Quickly winding down with 1.22 left. Green throws to the flat. It's caught. Veron Haynes still on his feet. And the big fullback rumbles and stumbles to the 40. A 20-yard little pitch and catch. Talking to the coaching staff this week, you asked, who's the leaders on your football team? Veron Haynes stepped up. A new coaching staff. He's made the coaching staff proud. He's gotten guys to work harder in the offense, off-season, off through the offense, through the uh, off-season program. Just playing solid, solid football this afternoon. Officially 21 yards. One of the team captains for Georgia on the ground. Well, Musa Smith, as long as the legs continue just to, to, he picks them up, carries a couple of guys on his back around 215. And when you think there's no yardage, he walks away with two, maybe three. It's just amazing how he moves the pile forward and just north and south. But he has a burst as well to get around the corner. A, a good, good football player for his size. On the shotgun, second down, call it eight. Three wideouts. Green, great play fake, and then falls incomplete as he had McMichael open, but led him just a little bit too much. That stops the clock with 28 ticks left here in the third. So Randy McMichael, good looking tight end. He's been slowed a lot by injuries in his career at Georgia with thumbs and knees. He moves around well for a guy that big, 6'4", almost 230 pounds, of good hands. Catches a, catches a football with his hands. Third down and eight. Green under pressure. <laughs> Henderson brought the heat. Big John Henderson, 6'7", 290. Maybe he, he did have that, uh, that halftime speech. Maybe Casey got to him. Just a lot of pressure from the pocket. The pocket collapses around David Green. And, you know, I've never been a fan of play action. You see the play action here on third down. You got a team that's blitzing you. David Green has no chance to get the football up. So that ends the 
the third quarter with our score still knotted at 17. We'll return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Fourteen fifty-three left. Georgia, Tennessee in a battle. 17-17. It's the SEC. Yeah, indeed. Tennessee now with the football. Bobby Graham goes in motion. Balls will keep it on the ground to Travis Stevens. A couple of yards to the 15-yard line. And Josh Mallard fighting off. Just uh, blocks inside to make a tackle. Craig Bowler, Jack Andre Ware, first game on CBS. My goodness, 17-17 for the Heisman winner. Not bad, huh? It's been a fantastic start, I'll tell you that. It's a good ball game. Turned into somewhat of a chess match yeah. uh, here in the in the second half, but uh, maybe whoever ends up with the football last. Second down and eight. Tennessee trying to stay perfect on the year. 3-0, and 2-0 and in SEC play. the play action they throw the tight end written off oh, great tackle hit him right on the thigh pad and Warnsley has played a football game hey, what, he may be the player for uh, player of the game for Georgia thus far downing punts inside the five yard line knocking passes away and then tackling a big tight end on the move coming right at it the play fake by Casey Crossan just play action pass rolling to his left and delivering a good pass Now fourth quarter time of possession this season. That tells a big story right there. Tennessee's dominated nearly 72% of the time. They've given up, what, 12, nearly 13 minutes for opponents? Not much. Tennessee 5 of 14 on third down tries. It's Dawson is on the run, looks for help, head to the sideline. Oh, took a late hit, and the flags come out. I mean, he took a licking. go as we take you back in time and Casey Clawson quickly got up at this stomp. Well they, they they made the call the right call here on Casey Clawson. Definitely Chris Clemens hits him and knocks him out of bounds. Hits him while he's going out of bounds. Just a a bad bad choice of uh, to actually hit the guy. Should try actually trying to pull up on him. But they miss a call on Bobby Graham who's crossing for Casey Clawson. Linebacker uh, Boss Bailey just grabs his jersey. That gives Tennessee a first down at the 39 yard line. Will drop play up the middle, stumbles, but still regains his feet. Travis Stevens. Hey, Tim, I could guarantee you, here's Andre Ware, who uh, he had a few tucks and a few runs in his day. You get, a little, you get a little heated, I can tell on that. <laughs> I like throwing it more so than running it. Though. Second down six for the Volunteers. Breaking through the pile somehow. Stevens at the 35-30. Flags down back around the 45. Two flags, in fact, to the 45 and 48. Late flags came out. That was a long ways away from where Stevens was running. This kid ought to be the definition of patience. Uh -oh. He's hobbling a little bit. Just a little bit. He's he's running hard. Maybe maybe some cramps. Because he's he certainly carried the load in the running game for Tennessee today. We'll bring this one back. That wipes out a 33-yard run by Travis Stevens. Travis Stevens is clearly the man. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. He's clearly the man. We're talking to Coach Phil Former. He likes all his backs. Travis, Travis Stevens is the man. You look here, just a little inside. He disappears in this area, comes out of there, and straight north and south. That's why he has all those positive yards. He comes into a pile. If he's able to get out, he's directly up the field. They credit Herrera, who moved from 
left tackle to guard today with that hole. Lawson throws underneath. Complete. Good shoestring tackle. Troy Fleming just checked in. And Gilbert, who's been all over the field, brings him down at the 49-yard line. Casey Clausen's a guy, if you give him some time, you play some zone coverage behind him, he's going to pick you apart eventually. He does a good job of getting himself going through his progressions and finding there, checking down to the back, which is probably his last option in the pass practice. Well, you've got Stevens, who uh, went off with what looked to be a, a, a nicked-up ankle, and now Troy Fleming had to be helped off. You mentioned about the depth of Shellback, it's young, and there's a, a, a potential of some, some great players coming out of this system. Corey Larkins, Shed, uh, Shedrick Houston, uh, Jabari Davis, Tinsley, Derek Tinsley. Washington wrapped up at the 45-yard line. Well, today's Rigid Tools Scholar Athlete Award goes to Will Bartholomew of Tennessee. Rigid Tools commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Tennessee's General Scholarship Fund. And by the way, Bartholomew already has earned his finance degree back in May with that GPA 3.53. He's already the definition of student athlete. Yeah, absolutely, already graduated and still just playing through his final season. Over 11 minutes left, left second down and four. Two wideouts to the far side. Not much. Gilbert with a picture perfect tackle on Corey Larkins, the redshirt freshman who came in with only 10 carries. He's a former defensive back turned tailback. Coach Randy Sanders there trying to spread the field, spread Georgia out a little bit, go to the shotgun and then run the draw play, create some running lanes for Corey Larkins. Big offensive line of Tennessee. You just saw Will Offenhuis will be 6'8", 320 on the right side tackle. They can move some people around. Coming up on 10 minutes left, fourth quarter, 17-17, Tennessee and Georgia. They're down and short. Back in the game is Stevens, wasn't out long. And a first down, Tennessee at the 40-yard line. Clemens made the tackle for Georgia. Go over to the sideline, get a little rub down, get that cramp out, come right back in. We put our put our, 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 uh, our horse back in the game. He'll lead us, lead us right up the hole for a first down. Good coaching matchup today. Phil Fulmer, of course, 10 years in Knoxville as the head coach. Mark Richt for Georgia. First and 10 from the 40-yard line of the Bulldogs. Lawson with the pump. Out of the pocket he goes. Flags are down. Chased and throws out of bounds. Incomplete. But a flag at the 41. Boy, heavy pressure by Charles Grant, number 19. A junior. Good smart play by Casey Clawson, just getting rid of the football. Flag on Tennessee. You got two quarterbacks who are just kind of maturing right before your eyes. Yeah. Good Casey point. Casey Clausen point. and David Green. Just every week they seem to get better and better. A good grasp of the offense and just playing well. Tom Ritter. The legal formation on the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. Five yards. Replay first down. You know, Casey Clausen is 9 and 1 as a volunteer starter. And, and Andre, honestly, it's got to be unfair to compare him to what Peyton Manning did here in Knoxville. It really is. At this point. It really is. It's this early. First and 15 from the 45. And a, oh! Up and over at the 40. I mean, Gilbert and Wansley sent Stevens airborne. Like a, like a propeller. Tim Wansley, he knows that he can't come in and tackle Travis Stevens high. He's too powerful, built too low to the ground. So he comes in, what's he do? He goes right down around the ankles, just like a like an airplane propeller. Here Travis Stevens outside, then back inside. Here comes Tim Wells. A good, good defensive stop there. You have any question about durability? Don't question that no, man's yeah. toughness. Travis Stevens, 29 carries today, 173 yards. To the flat, a little bit high. Incomplete. Just amazing. 
Maryland has come a long way long in way. a short period of time. Long way. 17 all here in Knoxville. Heading down to home stretch with 8.47 remaining. Third down and 10. Good protection over the middle ball tip once twice incomplete Great play there by Jermaine Phillips You got Kelly Washington trying to work the inside of the field Passes Jermaine Phillips and a good job of just getting his hands up to knock the ball down This kid does a good job of working his way into zone coverage Tim Walsey comes back works Works behind him knocking the football away he is all over yep. the field for the Georgia Bulldogs. Impressive. Impressive day for Wansley. Once again, the punt and a high, high hanger. Fair catch signal for at the 12-yard line. So a timeout. 8.34 left in Knoxville. Couldn't be closer. Fourth quarter, Georgia, Tennessee putting on quite an SEC battle today. 17 all. Great goal Jack Andre Ware and his volunteer crowd up and alive. Noisy in that end zone. They throw underneath. Complete. Freddie Gibson. Breakaway speed at the 40. And Gibson out of bounds at the 33-yard line. We're talking about a kid who hadn't, hadn't caught a ball all season long and comes in here today, catches his first one for a touchdown. Just a drop back here by David. David Green, he comes underneath all the way across coverage, and then it's just pure athletic ability and speed. Down the sideline, he's run down along the sideline with Jabari Green. But wow, just an underneath route. You clear it out with a tight end, you come underneath with the wide receiver. David Green, an easy read, gives it to him, and lets him make a play with his legs. Well, the play went 55 yards, and now Georgia. And even field goal range with another five to ten yard pickup and off the right side is jasper saints and julian battle had to come up on the strong side the strong safety position to make the tackle saints is getting some pretty good reps today and, and relief of musa smith but we see a flag down alex jackson had held on just a little bit too long it was a good block for a while but he held on just a tad bit too long well, you leave no question what Phil Fulmer wants. Let's push them back. Absolutely. Let's get them out of field goal range. And once again, Tom Ritter. During the run, holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, replay first down. So Phil Fulmer gets his wish. They push him back to the 39-yard line. First down now. The replay at 15 on the 39-yard line. Georgia from the eye. Green, the left-hander. Good protection. Steps and throws complete. Randy McMichael. I'm really amazed with him being a red-shirt freshman quarterback with his poise and his patience. He stands in the pocket and waits for his tight end, Randy McMichael, to come open. He was covered in zone coverage. Just guys in the middle of the field, the linebackers, waited for him to clear and hits him in the dead spot of the defense. Andre, the most interesting point he told us this week, this team has no superstars. And he says that's good. We've come together because we play together. Absolutely. And right now in the fourth quarter, how true. To the 17. Henderson with the tackle on Musa Smith. Grind it out now with Musa Smith. But the play before, going back one play. David Green having to make a throw to move the offense. He had a big penalty by an offensive lineman after a big run. That puts a lull in the offense. But he comes back, steps up, make a, makes a big, big throw to get his team right back in field goal position. We can feel the tension again in this stadium. Last year in Athens, Georgia won, snapping a nine-game losing skid, 21-10. Saints gets the ball up the middle to the 12. The two-headed monster, so to speak, Lucy Smith and now Jasper Saints. Almost alternating on every play. Lucy Smith gets tired, Jasper Saints comes up, and they don't miss a beat. And don't forget this guy right here, 35. Captain Veron Haynes leading the way through that big front of Tennessee. A little winded, but he has certainly done a job, a good job of lead blocking all day for those two tailbacks. Right now, Georgia is satisfied to let this clock continue to 
to wind down. 637 and counting. 17-17. Georgia has not won here since Herschel Walker was a freshman back in 1980. Flags are down. Ooh, nearly intercepted at the five-yard line. Jabari Greer, the right corner, but flags are down at the 11. But Georgia's going to have to march back five, and so instead of third and, and two, it's going to be third and seven. Well, this offense, that might be a little too close. You need some more breathing room. Move us back a little bit so we can have a little more space to throw the football. You don't want to get too close with that, with that passing game that uh, Coach Mark Rick brings. Well, you just got to be impressed with the way Georgia has stepped up on the road in front of this, this crowd and played well. Well, they, they told us it's all about attitude. Yeah. And you know what? They're right. playing. They're playing for Mark Rick. You're right. A timeout. Georgia calls timeout, and we'll take a break. 17-17 in Knoxville. And yeah, don't forget NFL action tomorrow here on CBS here in Knoxville, 17-17. Three timeouts remain for the Volunteers. Only one left for the Bulldogs. They're going to pitch it out to Musa. Inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Good hard hit by Rashad Baker, the free safety. Really not willing to take a gamble in that situation. Going to go for the for sure points after watching David Green try to almost force one to play before and almost for an interception. They're going to make sure they have the best chance to get some points on the board here late in the fourth quarter. Bennett hit a 29-yard field goal in the opening quarter for the first points for the Bulldogs. This will be from 31 yards. He'll go the holder, and the left footer gets it up, and good from 31. So Georgia takes the lead, first points of this half, 20 to 17, a 31-yard boot. Five forty-four left in Knoxville, and just moments ago, Bennett from 31 yards out and Georgia who has not won on this field since 1980 up by three seven plays 75 yards and Georgia works 250 off the game clock Brett Kirowak has it teed up at the 35 yard line and no return seven yards deep in the end zone you got to give credit where credit's due and the coaching staff of Georgia coming into a place that is, is tough to win on the road. And you're coming in against the number six ranked team in the country. Right now you're leading them going down the stretch. You come against the number one team in the SEC defensively. Only Absolutely. giving up 222 yards a game. And so tough on the ground, giving up only 41 yards. Clawson dumps it off. Not much. A tough year for Coach Pasqualoni up at Syracuse. Had a chance to see them in the kickoff classic yep. against Georgia Tech. They played well the first half, and then Georgia Tech just took over and rolled the second half. Five minutes remaining here in Knoxville, Neyland Stadium, packed to capacity. Tennessee down by three. Clawson, the sophomore, tucks and runs at the 20-25. And Clawson leans to the 26-yard line and hit hard by Charles Grant to the right end. I want to see him get down just a little bit sooner. Good protection there. It's just good coverage down the field by the Georgia Bulldogs. They play zone. Not a whole lot of room to throw the football. Casey's stepping up, working the pocket a little bit. See some daylight. Get down just a little bit early. Chris Clemens also in on that stop. Lawson's numbers, 179 total yards. Tennessee 7 of 17 on third downs. They need four to keep this drive alive. And the pocket throws, caught, first down, volunteers. Bobby Graham made the catch. You see him cover up. Not going to lose the football first down of this drive. Continue. Gets in a crowd, just going to cradle the football, make sure I got the first down. 
You look at Casey Clawson. His eyes are down the field. He's reading coverage, comes off to a guy that's wide open, reads the zone out, comes down to Bobby Graham, checks it down to Bobby Graham for a first down. Under four minutes left. Tennessee with all three timeouts remaining. Georgia with one. And they go right to the strength of Georgia. Maybe two yards. Sullivan in on the stop along with Clemens. And we take you back last year. Well, that dra uh, snapped a nine-year drought. Musa Smith went up and over, and it was 21-10 the final. And the goalposts did come down. The Tennessee players didn't like that goalpost coming down on them. Second down and seven. Troy Fleming checks in. The Tennessee backfield, three wideouts. Check that four. Lawson chewing up some clock from the shotgun. Steps up, slings it near side. Washington turns up and is bumped out of bounds at the 49 of Georgia. And it stops the clock. Most importantly, Andre with 2.52 left. Jermaine Phillips pushed him out after a 15-yard game. This is kind of unfair. But how long does he stay at Tennessee? I mean, the guy is a phenomenal athlete. The, his, the way he's picked up on things, I mean, I don't see him here to his senior, till, until his senior year, but maybe that's been the kind of the trend is that they stay the four years once they're here at Tennessee. But this guy is talented. Nine catches, 108 yards. He told us, I want to talk about it right now. He's still got things to learn, and he's learning today as Boston steps up under pressure, picks up some yards, flags go down. Around the 44-yard line, Clemens, Clemens playing a whale of a game today along with Gilbert. The backers along with Boss Bailey, very active for the Bulldogs. That's an inopportune time to have a holding penalty. You're moving down the field, your quarterback making plays with his legs, and then, lo and behold, there goes the flag to bring you back 10 yards. Uh, Clawson lost, uh, nearly lost the right shoe. Offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders looking at was a quarterback here with Tennessee. You know what's amazing? Once you're a ball, you're always a ball. I mean, there's Phil Fulmer. He played here. Sanders played here. Defensive coordinator John Chavis was a walk-on back in the mid-70s. Once a ball, always a ball. Continuity. That's the success of the Tennessee program. There's Coach Chavis. Uh, and all of them have been here for a while. Yeah. First down. Lawson throws and complete. Stops the clock. Bobby Graham, the intended receiver. And there's Phil Fulmer, offensive guard at 68-71. Chavis and Randy Sanders. We had to give Chavis a little trouble. He goes, hey, I was just, that was the 70s do at the time. You know, now look at it. Uh, you know what? We've been here since a couple of days this week. I think I have yet to see him smile. He is just all business. Now in our meeting, there was very rarely uh, you saw a crack of a smile. He is very, very yeah, focused small. with his job. Second so down, 18. Clawson from the shotgun. Tennessee up top. Oh, big catch. Washington had it. It popped free. Incomplete. Wansley and Gilbert delivered the big hit. Well, now it's time for the CBS Sports Line stat of the game and its passing yards. Georgia 244, tennis 194. For complete game stats, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword, enter CBS Sports Line. 244, 194. The game has not slowed down one bit. You see the hit, Tim Walsley. <laughs> Put on our man, Kelly Washington. They're just welcoming him, welcoming him across the middle of the field. 21 to 34, 194. Two touchdowns came early in this game for Casey Clawson. Third down. Pressure throws. Complete. First down, Tennessee. And it's Bobby Graham. That's what having a good wide receiver will do for your football team. They rotate the coverage down here to protect against Kelly Washington on this side of the field. What does Casey Clawson do? He comes back to the other side to Bobby Graham. Uses his eyes, moves the, moves the safeties over to the right side of the field and hits the in route coming from across the field. It's a big time throw and a long throw all the way back across the football field. 23-yard pickup 
And he did it under heavy pressure. Took a good big shot off the right side after the release. Two minutes left. Tennessee down by three. Clawson throws. Picked off! Phillips, the rubber back. Emotion pouring out on that Georgia sideline. Jermaine Phillips, a senior out of Roswell, Georgia. Just here, just a timed out route. Jermaine Phillips cuts underneath the route. It's a five-step drop. Casey Clawson, it's out of his hands. Jermaine Phillips underneath the route and makes a great play. One more time, we're going to look at it. Just sees it, lets it go. He thinks he can get it over Phillips' head. Just underthrows it a little bit for an interception. 153 remaining, and right now, Georgia wants to run the clock. Three timeouts, however, remain for Tennessee. And there's the man of the hour, Jermaine Phillips. Three-year letterman, Roswell, Georgia, with the pick. We'll be back. Timeouts remaining. Georgia with one, Tennessee with one. Third down, five. Loose ball, but it was whistled dead, so it's going to be a fourth down. Tennessee will get the ball back one more time, down three, Andre, and a timeout remaining with 132. Yeah, just not wanting to gamble very much. Coach Mark Rick there is going to three consecutive runs run back to back to back. Not going to take a chance at throwing an interception. Defense has played well all day, Craig. Well, I'll put it in the defense's hands as well. Now, Tennessee has used the timeout. Georgia has won if they would need it. And right there you see the offensive coordinator of Tennessee. That was uh, Randy Sanders talking with Clawson. And now Phillip Fulmer pacing the sideline. Former quarterback talking to his young, his young sophomore. I guess the question here is do you go after the punt? There's not a whole lot of time. And if you block it, you almost assure yourself of a field goal. So you got to stay tuned for that one. Well, Tennessee's had so much success under Philip Fulmer here at Newland Stadium. Andre, this is incredible numbers, but 51 and 4 in this stadium. Four losses include three to the Florida Gators and one to Bama. Jonathan Kilgo will punt this football just inside his own 25 yard line. Rashad Baker awaits. Good snap, and they do come with pressure. Kilgo gets under and turns it over at the 15-yard line. And a long ways to go for Tennessee. And not much time. No timeouts. 121 left. As I look around Neyland Stadium, I see still the orange faithful stain in their seats. Well, nobody's <laughs> Not one person has, uh, has left early. They are going to cheer their team on to the bitter end. Up next, it's Florida and LSU. SEC doubleheader here on CBS. Casey Clawson under center, three wide receiver set. Georgia rushes three. Caught and then dropped. They're going to say incomplete around the 36 yard line, and it was Kelly Washington taking the hit from uh, Jermaine Phillips. I'll tell you, Phillips has been a hitter today, along with Gilbert, the middle linebacker, David Jacobs, the nose tackle. They've spread this wealth around quite a bit with his Bulldog defense. I'll tell you what, Bruce Thornton has, has played well, having played two not up to not subpar games, so to speak. Not bad games, but subpar games. He's played well today. Again, Georgia lines up with three rushers. Clawson on second down. Now throws near sideline. It's caught. Couldn't get to the sideline, however, to stop the clock. And that was Troy Fleming knocked down by Boss Bailey. And it's going to stop the clock just briefly to move the chains and set it and get it back in place. In case, Casey Clawson trying to get a play called where he can get the ball snapped pretty quick here. And Andre Tennessee now is going to have to shadow the play of Georgia with that hurry up offense to no huddle field over the middle. Knocked down, incomplete. Boss Bailey leaned down. 
Incomplete, stops the clock, 57 seconds left. No timeouts for Tennessee. Georgia's just gonna play zone defense and drop deep. Casey Clawson had Troy Fleming in a, in a swing pattern. Give it to him, let him get out of bounds, you get your seven, eight yards. All you need is a field goal. You got plenty of time, 57 seconds left. That's an eternity when, when all you need is a field goal. Don't force the ball. Again, Georgia really spreading the field. They drop back eight, three on the rush. They throw to the flat little screen. Here comes Travis Stevens at the 45, 40. You gotta be kidding. Stevens, 10, five. Touchdown. Unbelievable. zone coverage, prevent defense, drop off the screen, and let your horse lead you in. Alex Rolls with the extra point. Low snap, and the boot is away, and good. Everybody oh, playing Rocky Top in Knoxville. Yeah, everybody drop back in coverage. Just a, a little screen out. Anthony Herrera, a good block there. Travis Stevens just on his leg. Casey Clawson just, he can see it. He's watching it from behind the line of scrimmage, watching the play develop, going down to congratulate his teammate. What a football play. Just outside and just pure speed up the sideline. And they're in prevent defense, so everybody's back deep already. Rush three, and they drop back eight. And look at Coach Philip Fulmer and the stadium shaking. Unbelievable comeback late. Georgia with a terrific performance today. On the road, four plays, 78 yards on for a 37-second drive. That's doing it pretty quick. What you want, but there's a magical sense, a magical feel You're here at Helix right. Stadium. Absolutely right. What does that do for Casey Clausen's confidence as a young quarterback? 37 second drive. You're down. You need a field goal to go into overtime, and you deliver a touchdown pass. Little squib kick, and down on the dirt at the 41-yard line. Boy, the emotions running high, both sidelines. Randy McMichael brought it in and held it for Georgia at the 41-yard line. One timeout for the Bulldogs. You know, Henderson, the Outland Trophy winner, Andre, we know this well, and Casey Clawson, they've had some jaw sessions, and there's a lot of emotion play between these two about Let's play to win SEC championship and then a national title. Yeah. First and 10, Georgia down by four and one timeout left. David Green in the pocket throws and complete. Breaks a tackle, Damian Gary, who has that breakaway speed past midfield to the 47-yard line. Lott and Baker make the tackle. Here's the go-ahead touchdown right here. Casey Clawson reading it out, just drops it off. Three-man rush out here. Anthony Herrera gets a block, and it's all Travis Stevens down the sideline. On the rollout, the left-hander throws incomplete. One, two, three, four, five. Orange jerseys around the football. Keep in mind, Georgia, they're out of timeout, so 20 seconds left. 26 seconds left. Excuse me, they have one timeout left. One timeout left. They, they're looking for a big completion. Get themselves down here and then take a shot at a home run. There's not very much time left. Three wideouts, two to the far side. 26 ticks left, fourth quarter, second down 10. David Green, good 
poise, good throw over the middle. Cut! Randy McMichael is traffic. It is not over by a long shot. At the 20 yard line, first and 10, Georgia. 20 seconds, you can get what, roughly three plays off in 20 seconds. David Green threaded the needle. I mean, that's cliche, but that's the truth. Back he goes, throws complete. Now you call the timeout. Back to McMichael, the tight end. Andre Lott wrapped him up inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. My, my, my. 10 seconds left. What a football game. What a football game. Everybody, all 107,000 of them are on their feet. Wow. No timeouts. Georgia burns their final timeout. Here's the tail end of Travis Stevens' touchdown run. Was he in bounds? You look here. Did he cross the goal line? All it takes is just to knock the pylon down. It's a touchdown, folks. Ten seconds remaining. David Green, Casey Clawson. Folks, if you want to know the future of quarterbacking in the SEC, you've seen two incredible, calm, confidence, confident performances by both these young men. Clawson, a sophomore. David Green, a redshirt freshman. It's got to be a quick throw, Craig, so you, if it's incomplete, you got at least one more down. Ten seconds, you can get two plays off in ten seconds. You cannot hold the football and let it run out. Mark Rick first year as a head coach. Michael Johnson lines up in the slot to the far side. Play fake, Green throws, all alone, touchdown, dogs! For Ron Haynes! Stunned silence for the, for the folks in orange. You almost hate that somebody's got to lose this football game just the way the kids have played all day long. You just hate that somebody's got to go out of here the loser today. Actually, there are no losers. Both teams have showed tre a tremendous amount of pride, a tremendous amount of character. Just going to come up on the short end of the stick. Five seconds remain. David Green, so cool, so calm, under, under immense pressure. It's been a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. With it being my first one here on CBS, I couldn't have asked for a better ending than this one. How you got? Wow. How are you matched this? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not going to try to tell you the truth. Wow. Illegal timeout was the call, and that's why the flag came out. So a knee, and the clock will run. Clock didn't move. Actually, you know what? They're not going to try for the two-point conversion, so the clock would not run. No chance for a block. So five seconds left. One final opportunity for Tennessee to touch the football. Yeah, here's a play action pass to Jasper Sankson in the into the end zone. He throws to the fullback Veron Hayes. Just a nice touch on the football. What a gutsy call. Play action. You got to feel some heat. Mark Rick with a with just an absolute fantastic call. And David Green just lobs it up over the middle of the field. Well, just moments ago, you saw elation for Philip Fulmer, and now you see the head coach of Tennessee with the grimace. And there's Veron Haynes, two-year letterman out of Bronx, the New York area captain, one of the captains for Georgia. I'll tell you what, his family's got to be proud of him. He's played a, a fantastic football game this afternoon to cap it off with a winning touchdown pass. But I won't say that yet. <laughs> There's still five seconds left on that clock. And don't forget, coming up next, still more SEC football here on CBS. Doubleheader continues with Florida and LSU. A high, high hanging kick. 
taken at the 23-yard line, and they're going to do a little pitch out. There's a loose ball, and the clock runs dry. Georgia pulls off the win in Knoxville, their first victory since a man named Herschel Walker was a freshman back in 1980. Just a fabulous, fabulous, well-played football game from both sidelines, the Georgia Bulldogs, as well as the Tennessee Volunteers. Both, both teams fought and scratched all the way to the finish. The final that day in 1980, 16-15. Today, 26-24. Mark Rick now 3-1. How about the strategy on just taking the knee on the extra point? Don't want to have it uh, with a, a two-point lead. You don't want to have it blocked and run back for, for a score or a fumble, risk anything anything on, a, on the extra point. A thriller in Knoxville. And for Andre Ware, I'm Craig Bullerjack. We say so long from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville with a final score is Georgia 26, Tennessee 24. Coming up next, game two of our SEC doubleheader as the second-ranked Florida Gators take on the 18th-ranked LSU Tigers. Georgia 26, Tennessee 24. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.